showing me during this time. One thing. He's a jealous God. And I think in the church we've misunderstood what that means. Like we've interpreted that as he's this arrogant, self-obsessed being that just wants all of our worship. But what it is, he's a husband who is desperately in love with his bride. He is desperately in love with his bride. And as any devout husband, he will not stand by why some other guy comes along and tries to steal her affections. You see, the enemy of our souls he already knows and he tries to steal away our affections. He tries to get our focus on other things. He tries to get us to long for other things as if those other things would ever fulfill the longings in our hearts. Hey. He is a jealous God and he will have no other lovers stealing the affections of his bride. So as we were worshiping, I saw an image of a heart. And it was a fleshly heart. It was, it was plump and it was pink and it was beautiful. But then I saw like, like this, you know, the, we always see, you know, the shape. I know that's not the real shape of a heart, but the, we always see this, you know, where it's shaped at the top like that. And I saw one of the, one of the lumps at the top, it was black. And it had become decayed. It had become, uh, there, was, there was no life source going to it anymore. It was void of, of blood flow and oxygen. It was, it was, it was so dead. And I saw him come in with a knife, a very sharp, precise scalpel. And he did surgery and he cut off that section of the heart and he removed it. And then the, 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 the vantage point kind of came down to, to you know, the, the point is here and it came down to the section over here and there was like this, this, this jagged area where it had been wounded. And he came in and he began to, to clean it up. And he began to sew it up. And I looked again. And all of a sudden, the whole heart, it was set on fire. Like... When I looked at it, it wasn't like, you know, when we think the fire of the Lord, you get all excited, right? It wasn't that, though. It was like a fire, like a fire that, that destroys. But it didn't destroy. What it did was it, I don't know how to explain it. It's like it, it I'll just say what I saw. So this fire went, and when the smoke cleared and I was able to see the heart again, the heart was this beautiful golden vessel. It was this beautiful golden shimmery heart. It was so beautiful. And not only was it so beautiful, but as he leans in closer, now he sees his reflection. And so I feel like we're in this moment where the Lord is saying to us, there will be no other lovers before me. 
but I'm also removing all the effects of those lovers. I'm moving all the effects of even things that were not lovers, but they were just things that came at you. Things you had no control over. Things you had no yes to. But the Lord is coming in and he's doing surgery on us. I'm going to read um, from Matthew. I officially have to put on glasses <laughs> to read small print. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> now I can see the verse number. Verse 10. <laughs> and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I, indeed, baptize you with water unto repentance. This was John the Baptist speaking here. And then he says, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you. With the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I'm going to read a little commentary. I was given this Bible by a sweet, sweet, cherished friend of mine. It's called the Revival Study Bible. And it is so cool because it has so many excerpts and writings from heroes of our faith, from men and women that have carried the fire of God faithfully throughout time. So I'm going to share with you a couple of things that are within this, this, this scripture there's a comment here that talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. You cannot choose between the Spirit and the fire because they are inseparable, one and the same. They are not two different baptisms, one in the Spirit and the other in fire. There is one baptism only in the Spirit and fire. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, he arrived with tongues of fire 120 men and women were divinely empowered and supernaturally endued. Heaven's power invaded the earth and those 120 then shook their whole world. Today, we have got plenty of fanfare, but very little fire. Plenty of formula, but very little flame. We are high on utterance. Everyone's got a word. Right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's got a word. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord this and that. Right? Mm -hmm. But how many of those words are actually coming from a place of Holy Spirit utterance? Many of them I would present to you today. Many are void of utterance. My sheep know my voice. Lean into the voice of your father and don't look to men to guide you any longer. We are flawed. We are flawed. Every last one of us are flawed. Don't look to men any longer to lead you. Lean into the voice of your Father. He alone will sustain you in the day of battle. Amen. And then you will be able to decipher and discern which voices are coming from a place of utterance and which ones are coming from a place of filtering through the soul. 
my sincere desire every single time I pray a prayer, every single time I grab a mic, God, please don't let me speak of my own accord. Help me to continually lean into your spirit and let not one thing come out of my mouth that is not from you. But when it does, because what? I'm flawed. When it does, God, let it fall to the ground and die. Let it fall to the ground and die. Where is the holy heat of his presence? Some of you felt that today. Some of you felt that, that heat, that presence, that, that glory weighting down upon you. What has happened to the mighty baptism from on high? How many have been immersed, soaked, saturated, dumped, and virtually drowned in his enabling power and might? Where is the overwhelming flood tide of his waves in our nation today? I present to you, it is here. There is an increase of the two worlds colliding. Right? Many of us can sense it. We see what's happening. There's this, this uprising of evil and darkness going on. But we don't focus on that. There is an uprising of the glory of God as it begins to shine out of his people as we understand our identity, who we are, and whose we are. There's a collision happening. But also within the church of those that say they are his, Many of them only say it in word, but don't know him, intimately know him. There is also becoming, there's a scripture, I believe it's in, um, in Ezekiel, you'll have to look it up, uh, he, he's talking about, um, he's talking about the leaders of the, the, the flock in this passage, and he talks about how he's coming to bring a division between the sheep and the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, you guys, that's the word I got this morning. I thought, how discouraging, because I had Beth had just come and told me that uh, somebody wasn't going to come this morning, and I was like, well, what's wrong? <laughs> and Beth, in her blessed, you know, sweet little spirit, was like, Nothing, you know, it's all good. It's all, it's all good. You know, people good. are, you know, busy mm -hmm. and they have time. And God brought to my attention um, two things. One, I want you to this the picture that I saw. Judy, the picture that I saw was Father God on the throne. And you know, when you go to stand up, maybe y'all have better core than me, but you kind of stick one foot in front of the other because I'm gonna, <laughs> kind of gonna lean. I saw him stick his foot, mm. his right foot, mm. on the ground, and I'm like, he's gonna stand up. Mm. 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 He's gonna stand up. Mm. Mm. But the verse that he brought to me was kind of discouraging. That's why when you were talking, I was like. Okay, I need encouragement. It's kind of discouraging. There's a lot of mess going on, and he wants to remind us of that. He wants to remind us to be who we're supposed to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Christina was saying, you know. Understand this. In the last days, there will be times of difficulty. People will be lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Lovers of money. Mm -hmm. Proud. Arrogant. Yeah. Abusive. Disobedient to their parents, mm -hmm. ungrateful, mm -hmm. unholy, <coughs> heartless, yeah. unappeasable, slanderous, mm -hmm. without self-control, brutal, not loving, treacherous, reckless, mm -hmm. swollen mm -hmm. with conceit, mm -hmm. lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, mm -hmm. having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Mm -hmm. Avoid such people. Mm -hmm. It's not saying 
if it happens. <laughs> it's going to happen. And Beth, you reminded me this morning not to get in that hole. Because <laughs> it would have been easy me for to pick up a couple, mm -hmm. three of those. Mm -hmm. And go, ha mm -hmm. That's what you do. Right? Right. What Christine was telling us this morning is that's not us. Right. That's not who we were created to be. Right. That's not our DNA. In fact, the next verse says, hey. you know, not you guys. You followed my teaching. You have my conduct. You have my That's aim. Right. You have my faith. You have my patience. You have my love. That's you have right. my steadfastness. You are mine. You can walk in these ways. Yeah. So I'm just confirming what you That's said. It. Beautiful. That's it. And the thing is, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. Not in this place. Right? There's a difference between gatherings like this and other, mm -hmm. right? right? There's a tangible presence in this place. And those that are true seekers, we're going to seek out each other. We're going to seek out the presence, whether we're alone or, or, or wherever we are. We're always going to find each other. We're always going to find each other, right? Right? Let's read about the fire. This is actually really exciting. Fire illuminates. But no fire illuminates like the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. When a man is baptized with the Holy Spirit in fire, truth that was once dark to him becomes instantly as bright as day. Passages in the Bible that he could not understand before become as simple as ABC. And each page of God's holy word glows with heavenly light. This kind of baptism will do more for taking the infidelity and skepticism and false doctrine out of a man than any university education. Teaching is good. Teaching is necessary. But... No one can teach you better than the Word of God as you read it with the Holy Spirit. Fire makes warm and it makes us glow. You and I are cold. cold. Oh, how cold we are. And the Lord Jesus takes us and he plunges us into the fire of the Holy Spirit. We begin to grow warm and soon we glow Glow with love for God. Glow with love for Christ. Glow with love for truth. Glow with love for perishing souls. Men and women, the great need of the day is men and women on fire. Fire imparts energy. Science tells us that every form of energy can be transmuted into fire. When a baptism with fire comes, then comes power. That was the principal manifestation at Pentecost. The fire of God fell, and with the energy of that fire, men went out from the upper room, and 3,000 people were converted. Fire spreads. Nothing spreads like a fire. Right? Fire reveals, in 1 Corinthians 3.13, each man's work shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work and what sort it is. The night I prayed to God to baptize me in the Holy Spirit, the first thing that came to pass was that I had such a revelation of myself as I had never had before. A revelation of yourself as God sees you. How many of us know that the closer we get to the Lord, the more we see him in his holiness, the more we realize our own state of being. But the beauty, the beauty of the Lord is he never condemns. 
He never shows us something about ourselves without also offering a solution. Mm -hmm. Without also saying, it's okay. I know how this happened. I know how you got here. But I have the solution to wash it all away and to make you whole and new and completely, completely restored. Fire also refines. Malachi 3, 1 through 3 speaks of the purifying power of fire. Water cannot even cleanse as fire does. What we need is the fire of the Holy Spirit penetrating into the innermost depths of our being. Burning, 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 and cleansing. See, something that's so beautiful about the purification of precious metals is, especially silver, I, I'm not sure about other metals, but I know for sure with silver, what happens is that silversmith takes that, that piece of metal and he places it in the fire, but the key is he cannot take his eye off of it. He has to hold it in there all the way until but if he goes one second longer, the metal will be destroyed. But he pulls it out at the exact moment that it's had all it can handle before it's destroyed. And because he takes it right to that point, the result is the strongest version that it could be. Amen. And the most pure. That's good. That's good. He never takes his eyes off. Yes. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. Fire also consumes. I'm reminded of the scripture that says, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Right? The word of the Lord is like fire shut up in my bones. I cannot help but talk about his goodness. Everywhere I go, I probably get on people's nerves. I can't help it. It's like a fire inside of me that just has to come out. <laughs> He's so good. He's been so kind. He's been so gracious. When I think about, lately, I've just been pondering that he is so massive, like incomprehensible. I mean, truly incomprehensible. The creator of all things, who was and is and is to come, always has been, always will be. How? How in the world does he know how many hairs you have on your head? You probably brushed out a hundred this morning. <laughs> Right? I mean, you know, I shed constantly. There's there's 50 hairs every time I take a shower in the bottom of the tub. And I'm like, really? Yet somehow he knows how many hairs we have on our head. Every single billion person on the planet. How? This amazing, amazing, amazing Father God who loves us so much. That he's always right there. The moment we came in this place and turned our affections to him, what happened? He was right there. He was right there. He was right there. Christina, as you were saying that, the Lord kept putting in my mind the Apostle Paul. In Colossians, Philippians, Romans. He always starts off and says, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Mm -hmm. And I've been reading John Owen from the 1600s, who was actually the president of Oxford. And he came up and he said, the Holy Spirit had already put the grace of God in us. It's already in us. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, I was trying to drum up, you know, the Holy Spirit. I was trying to drum up his presence. And God, you know, for three days, I mean, I went into, it wasn't a depression, but it was like a breaking. And the Lord all of a sudden came up to me and says, 
What are you doing? My grace, he says, I'm already given myself. I'm already in you. I'm already there. He says, you don't have to drum it up. He says, all you have to do is just welcome me. And so that grace, you know, we misinterpret what grace is. That grace is God is already giving himself every day, every moment. He's already here in us, around us. And sometimes all I do now is I just say, Lord, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I have to meet him mm -hmm. because he's already there with me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that that beautiful grace is he's giving himself in in, in, in in thought. He's giving himself in presence, but he's already there. Yeah. And, and we have to quit trying to, right. to f search for him and try to drum him up. I mean, the moment we walked in here, he was already in us. Mm -hmm. He lives in us. That's mm -hmm. right. And so we have to just say, Lord, I'm here. I, I offer myself to you. That is an absolute beautiful key. Anyone who doesn't have this key yet, anyone who doesn't have this understanding yet, grab a hold of that. That is truth. That is truth that when we can understand that God is already with us, that he lives within us. When we can get a hold of this and understand that everywhere we go, we are bringing him with us, right? We're like little matches, right? We're talking about fire. We're like little matches that are, you know, we're lit. We're always, we're always walking around with these little flames, right? Like, you know, right? It's always there, just glowing, 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 right? We become unaware. We become unaware. But the moment we pause for a moment and set our affections on him, we can be walking around and just all of a sudden realize, wait a minute, I'm unaware of God. Wait a minute. And just pause. Just pause for a second, just inwardly. And say, Lord, thank you that you're with me. And just hook yourself right back in. Right? And then what happens when all those little matches join together in presence because we were always intended to be in community together, yeah. right? right. Mm -hmm. One head, mm -hmm. many body parts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Something else I was going to say. The switch, the switch is the Holy Spirit. When you focus back on him and say, Lord, you're, here, you're, you're already here, then the Holy Spirit comes on and says, now I can use you. Now I can move through you. Our dependence is on him. So one of my absolute favorite um, worship people on the planet um, is Stephanie Gretzinger. Um, she has just got the sweetest, most purest heart. Um, I had the joy of, of meeting her one time, and her sweet little, oh, her sweet little self was just as pure and as precious in person as it is how it conveys across um, through the, 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 you know, the internet. Um, but she, um, my husband and I have heard her, her say this a few times, and it's just so true, and it's to the point that was just made, that she talks about the fact that Jesus came all the way, right? He came all the way. So if there's any space between us and God, it's because we've created it, right? And so worship and or the intentionality to pause and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you, Lord? And just pause and reconnect, reestablish that connection. All that is is saying, okay, I'm removing the space. I'm removing the space that's between us, and I'm focusing my affections back on you. Now, there are times when we've allowed other things in, right? We talked in the beginning that he's jealous. He will not have any other lovers taking the affections of his bride. So there are times when, you know, you're turning to him and you're like, what's going on here? Where, where are you? He's still right there, but he's waiting on you to acknowledge that your heart has gone after other things and that you've grieved his heart, right? So we address that. And so that goes along with that last point I was making about fire consuming. In Ezekiel 24, verses 11 to 13, it talks about the consuming of power of fire. Fire of judgment that will consume the filth of Jerusalem 
And the baptism of fire consumes, in fact, cleanses by consuming. It burns up all the dross, all vanity, all self-righteousness, all personal ambition, all ungovernable temper. And really, just as Jose said, the fire is the baptism and fire. It's the Holy Spirit and fire. It's, it, they're one and the same. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. So, um, to kind of backtrack just a little bit as I kind of wrap this up is, you know, to talk about that division that's coming. We're going to start seeing a, a, a more clear evidence of the difference between um, the fat sheep and the lean sheep and those who are... Um, well, we're gonna we're just gonna really start seeing a difference between um, the sheep and the goats, between the sheep and the sheep, right? Our focus needs to stir up and place in us the desires and the concerns of His heart, and then that becomes our passion, that becomes our driving force, that becomes that fire that consumes us that we can can't keep shut up in our bones. Right? So then what happens is you become aware that you've got a job to do. You've got um, a mission to fulfill. You've got an assignment. And that is to carry the kingdom everywhere you go and establish his reign. Right? He's in you. He told us to go make disciples. He told us to go multiply and prosper. Well, how can we multiply if we're like this all the time? Right? Everywhere you go, look for an opportunity to establish truth and establish kingdom. Right? That's good. Yes. Yeah. You know that um, McPherson, she was probably the most powerful person. They, you know, they say that Catherine Coleman had an anointing. Amy? She had, yeah, Amy. Ooh. She had a greater anointing. And you know what they called her? The governor of Los Angeles. She had more power in the spirit. And she governed. She governed in the spirit Los Angeles until she died. And she was that powerful. Wow. And so the wow. issue, the issue is that, and I agree with what you're saying. What I'm trying to say is that each one of us, wherever we live, we should be the governor of our block or the governor of our town or the governor of, because we have the, we have the authority to do that. And they said that the moment she died, then the enemy came in. I mean, even the mayor, the governor, everyone went to her because she had already established that that, that area was her, what the kingdom of God through her. Through the spirit. Through the spirit. Well, they, what did Jesus tell us? He said, well, he, he told us by example, and then he also gave us orders to do so. Go and preach that the kingdom of heaven is here. Mm -hmm. Mark and I are in a, a um, kingdom business class. And the one thing that she continues to drill into us is kingdom means the king's domain. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is in you. Yes. The kingdom is in you. Mm -hmm. It's the king's domain. Everywhere we go, we establish that.